as you've reviewed last week, I mean, when you've looked back at it in, in detail, how close do you feel you were to, to getting on the right side of that result? Oh, but yeah, very close. We, we were in control of the game um, until uh, a few things yeah, let us down and then we weren't able to sort of recapture it. Has it given you or provided you with more specific areas to work on this week? Uh, there's been some similar threads uh, as as a few of our other games where we've we've made unforced errors back to back. Um, as I've said previously, it's not always how many errors you make, but but where and and when and what they are. Um, and we we made made them in yardage um, and build build pressure on ourselves, um, and then we weren't able to to defend as we normally would. How do you address? How does any coach? address the issue of unforced errors because you know by the by their definition no one else is is really involved yeah you know there's a lot that goes into it because players want to try and create something from their their possession whether they um uh, you know pass or carry they they want to do something good for the team so sometimes for some players it's over trying um for others it's a technical thing some it's a it's a concentration thing. So everyone is a little bit different. Some need to review it um, visually. Some need to practice it. Some need both. Uh, so, you know, our task is to to help the individual, to to help the team. In terms of the lineup this week, how different could that potentially look? Uh, the 21 will be very similar, very similar. Uh, but, there, you know, there may be a couple of changes there. But at the moment where, you know, we've got seven or eight of our top 18 or 20 players unavailable. Um, so, you know, we, we, uh, we believe in our squad and our, our roster and, you know, there's, there's good footy ahead, uh, but, you know, we need to find it this weekend. What's the prognosis on Tom Holroyd? Uh, they're still working through that with some um, scans and uh, they're awaiting some scan results um, for, a, for a calf issue. I presume that makes him unavailable for Sunday. Um, likely unavailable, but you know we've, we've got a longer turnaround here, so we've still got a few days to sort of work out whether he'll be a chance or not before we have to name that 21. What did he do? What, what was the actual issue? Uh, he actually had a, a hit in the back last week that um, against St. Helens. And at the time, didn't think a lot of it, but they think the the calf injury may have... Um, originated from the from the back injury, you know, the the nerves and stuff that travel down the leg, and sometimes it's transferred without trying to be too medical or, or anything. Um, yeah, it may be a referred sort of situation from his back. Is there any update on Zane? Uh, no, not at this stage. Uh, to my yeah, to my knowledge, he's sort of that's an indefinite process. But he, again, his health is fine. Um, he's in and around training and he's he's got a smile on his face and um, he's just restricted to not being able to train fully. He can do uh, moderate sort of low intensity exercise, which for a, a rugby league player is um, not not that stimulating, but that's that's where he's at for now. It's probably a tough one to, to say, but can you foresee him playing again this year? Um, it is quite possible that he will play yeah, again this year, but also don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. And his health and his, you know, his longevity as a as a human is more important than um than than playing. But for the time being, given the amount of players you've said seven or eight unavailable, how much of an issue does his absence sort of provide you at the moment? Uh, it, it doesn't help. Holroyd potentially, you know, Lasani, Zane, um, unavailable at the same time. Uh, maybe one or two others, but you know, it's we we got to focus on who is playing, and that's always been my my attention. But um, yeah, it certainly doesn't help. But it's it's the way it is, and every club deals with um, a, an injury situation at some stage or another. So ours is now. We'd we'd had a pretty good run of it for a period there. We had players returning from off season surgery that we had to sort of wait for. Um, we had a decent run of injuries there for a bit, uh, but they've all sort of lined up at the same time. Have you got any more of your more younger middles able to step up? Uh, I, I don't think middle-wise that we've got we've got kids that are, are ready for that. Um, 
we've got back rowers that can play there, you know, more seasoned guys if needed. So we'll we'll share the load as we need to. What's your gauge on Wakefield? And obviously their their struggles are well documented this year. How 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 challenging are they the team to prepare for? Yeah, they've had a lot of different personnel, a lot of different combinations. Um, you know, and they're they're trying different things to to try and get a result. So um it's hard to know exactly what what they'll look like on on Sunday. Uh, but we had a you know a particularly tough battle with them um at home on the that that snowy weekend a couple of months back. Um and they've they've made a lot of good teams, you know, really work hard for their their results. So, you know, we're we're under no illusions that they'll be they'll be throwing everything they've got. And you know, it's it's certainly more for us, our focus is a lot about um, cleaning up some things from from last week and and building you know building some more rhythm and consistency for uh, you know more of an eighty minute performance as people like to comment rather than last week we we probably had fifty or sixty minutes covered. And whenever you come up against a side who haven't won so far this season, it's always going to be a test of of attitude as well, isn't it? How, how important is it that the players don't look at the table? Very. Um, that should be every week, in my opinion. It's every every opponent is respected as as a dangerous one because they're the only one you're playing against. Um, it's irrelevant the table position as the competition has shown us this year. The um, you know team starts the season winning seven or eight in a row, and then they lose a couple in a row. Um, some other teams are sitting in the top. Top six have lost three or four in a row. You know, it's it's a close competition. Um, you know, we we've been part of that. We've been in a lot of a lot of close games, including the weekend. Um, the performances aren't quite at the standard that we want, particularly on the weekend. We've had some other good performances where we haven't got a result. Um, we've played better in some of our losing games and some of the ones we've won. So it's um, obviously it's about getting the result, but. The closeness of the competition is is fantastic and should be appreciated and respected and um, promoted. Um, so yeah, table watching is not not helpful. You're chasing two points every week, no matter who you're playing against. Just lastly, for me, what do you make of David Fafita's David Fafita traveling from the other side of the world to help his team out? Yeah, I, I don't know too much about how that that came about or if it was in the pipeline for a little while, um, but. Yeah, when I when I saw him uh, run out there on the on the weekend, I, I I was surprised a little bit, but obviously he's a he's a dangerous player. He's um a handful, terrific ball carrier, and uh, got some real spirit and energy about him and and uh, confidence, and he he will no doubt give give the team a boost. I know what you you've said about recruitment on a, a regular basis, but you've been linked with um, in the Aussie media with Luke Brooks. Any comment on that? Um. He's a good player. If he was here, that'd be good. But to my knowledge, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that. And I can go to sleep at night knowing that I'm not telling you guys uh, anything other than I know absolutely nothing about that. Um, in terms of uh, retention, I think you've already said that um, Tyndall and Walters have, have had offers and, and seem to have signed elsewhere. I think that leaves seven out of contract at the end of this season. What Are you making progress with those? Do you know when there'll be some announcements made and do you anticipate many of the seven staying? Uh, all, all players that are off contract could potentially stay. Um, some of those are, some of those will be staying um, and, and will be announced in time. Um, some of those are works in progress as well that are ongoing sort of negotiations. Um, so when there is one, we'll, um, we'll we'll be getting it out there. Have they all had offers then, the, the seven that um, that we don't know about? Oh, I'm not going to make comment around whether they've had an offer or not. Um, we're, we're talking to and have spoken to all of those players. Um, and that that's just a, a process that will take time in each individual case. Is that a distraction, do you think, having so many players um, in the final year of the deal? Oh, it, it can be for, for an individual. Um, I think a lot of players that are seasoned veterans have been in the position multiple times during their career where they've they've been off contract. So perhaps they're, you know, familiar with it. Sometimes for younger players, it's more 
uh, more of a challenge. And I think, you know, it seems like um, in in the UK that a lot of young players sign quickly after May 1st because they're, you know, they just want to get it, get it done. Um, but that's, that's sort of just an anecdotal sort of uh, feeling. Um, it can be a distraction, no doubt, but that's, that's the, the system that rugby league has created for itself where um, it does dealings publicly um, in the middle of a season. And it's, um, it's a, it's a distraction to the fans it's a distraction to people viewing the games because we, you know, we're here talking about 2024 when we're only halfway through 2023. You know, um, it's I understand people are interested and and it's um, no, it's newsworthy, but at the same time, it's, it's a distraction from from the present moment. Just one last question on the 2024. I think a few weeks ago you said that some of the recruitment has been done. I, are there some deals that that are completed? Um, in terms of recruitment that that are being wait that you're waiting to announce as a club, uh, I think the the comment I made around 2024 roster was more based around we have young kids in our program already that will emerge as Super League players later this year, perhaps, but but certainly next year. Um, that I think a lot of that sort of recruitment and roster building has been done. Yeah, you know, some of it prior to me being here kids like Max Simpson and Jack Sinfield and those guys, um, you know, emerging in the coming seasons, but other kids that have come through the Academy and Toby Warren and Leon Ruan and those type of kids will, will emerge as Super League players in time. Um, you said after the game on um, Saturday, you were, but to paraphrase, you, you were concerned about the rook speed. Is that something that you've um, been able to speak to the RFL about? And have you had any success with that i think i'll just not comment on that one um i i i raise some points from time to time um the referees you know they they see it differently and they're working on a different you know situation at the coaches meeting the other week there was a you know consensus among the coaches that some things needed tidying up um but you know that's a that's a work in progress and out of our control and um yeah i won't be commenting anymore just one for me. You mentioned, you know, the middles and there's not any young lads really ready to come through. If you were to lose another one, what, what sort of options have you got if if you were to lose someone else who, who could potentially move into the middle of your existing squad? Uh, James McDonald's played there. James Bentley's played there. Um, we've also got players that can, you know, Jared O'Connor was a 13 uh, we've got players that can also play more minutes. There's been various times this year where a lot of, you know, our front rowers are feeling like, oh, I could play longer. So that's the other alternative as well, that they they play longer, which um, is is good as well. How does that work with your plans generally for rotations? Because obviously there needs to be a little little bit of uh, thinking there if, if players are going to play more minutes, isn't there? Yeah, if you're going to play more minutes, then you need to to sort of make sure that they don't all get tired at the same time. Um, so it can it can alter the the interchange plan, but it also depends if you're playing two edge back rowers and a, a hooker that can play eighty minutes. That sort of takes the pressure off your middle unit as well. You can rotate them pretty pretty comfortably. Um, and at various times, Cameron Smith played eighty minutes as well. So um, for the two front rowers that Pending injuries and other disaster, um, it, it takes the pressure off those guys to have to play for too long. But our, our middles have good motors and they can they can go when needed. So um, they all played a lot of game time against St. Helens um, in various, you know, either playing on the edge or playing in the middle ab above and beyond what they'd done before. So that was that was a positive thing going forward as well. Um, just quickly, I think David Fossatou is on his eighth week of recovery now. How, how's that going? Yeah, good. Fuss is um, he's very close. He, he's probably two or three weeks to go in his sort of recovery, but he, he's he's in good shape. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to obviously Fuss being back. But he he's in he's made really made the most of this opportunity with his rehab to to get a preseason sort of under his belt that he he probably hasn't had for a couple of years. That's pretty much him on time as well. I think from from initial reports, wasn't it? 
I, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was it was a, a sort of ten week injury, I, I think, with the surgery. So, um, he, yeah, he, he won't be too far off. And if it's an extra week for the sake of you know completing the rehab, then that's a good result too. And just just quickly, a word on, on Harry Newman. Obviously, you mentioned the blow last week. He's had a week now to to think about that. How how is he doing mentally and himself on the sidelines? Oh, he, he's disappointed, you know, frustrated, all of those things, as you would be with having having an injury. And then, obviously, for Harry, he's been through a few of them now. Uh, but it's an opportunity to to try and build back better and and resolve some th- some things. Um, he had. You know, he had a, a really serious leg break a few years ago, um, which was a complicated injury where a lot of the injuries that players sustain are in in a surgeon's mind um, are reasonably straightforward and rehabbed quite smoothly and consistently. Um, the leg break that Harry had, from my understanding, is, you know, complicated and not a sort of smooth recovery and that's probably impacted on the rest of his his body as far well the rest of his sort of lower limb uh, which has added some pressure to to the hamstring seemingly so working on some things there to to try and build him back better and resolve some issues we we feel like we have resolved some issues but obviously some still to go